Jonathan? You know, I think the word augment is correct, and I think um, if, you'll ask, if you ask many of the math specialists, um, there is no perfect math program out there. Nothing, there's nothing that you just take off the shelf and you start using, especially in a community like Newton, where we have very high standards. Um, I, I think what our teachers and our math specialists have done over the last year, few years is to figure out how to augment um, the everyday math program in the elementary schools, and I believe that the new edition, the third edition, has helped do that. It's, it's brought in some new assessment measures where they're able to identify at an earlier stage where children are struggling. And to me, finding struggling students at that first, second, third grade level is, is most important in preventing, um, uh, preventing problems. Um, I think uh, parents in, uh, in, uh, in many communities besides Newton um, augment, um, uh, augment their children's math education. I think it's not just just here in Newton. Um, I would like there to be a more comprehensive study um, of not only the math curriculum, but also the percentage of students who are um, taking additional math tutoring outside of the schools. I think it's important uh, for us to do that. And I think that um, uh, there's staff um, at Newton um, South, as well as some activists on the issue who are looking into figuring out designing such a study. I think we need to do that. Do, do you think, and this is just an aside, but do, do you think if you were uh, a math teacher in the, in the public schools or if you were the math curriculum coordinator, would you feel you're, you're losing to your competition if, if people are, are paying their hard-earned money to tutor their kids outside of school? I mean, I would feel like I'm somehow yeah. failing, you know? I mean, personally, if I was doing that and, and, and that yeah, well, it's, I would feel better if my students didn't have to spend a lot of time outside yeah. uh, the classroom. It, it's one thing if they're trying to get ahead, yeah. and if they're trying to jump several levels. We have many students here in Newton who are actually um, several years ahead um, of even an advanced math program. We have kids from our middle schools taking high school math. We have many high school kids who are taking uh, advanced college math. We also have many, many students here in Newton who are taking advanced placement uh, mathematics and scoring extremely well on the AP tests and getting uh, college credit uh, through the AP exam process, which um, for those of us who are now paying college bills. I have to volunteer. I took those tests. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, South. and uh, you know, my son is going to have two credits uh, in college for his uh, AP math, so I, it's, uh, it's very helpful. Okay, this is the next question goes to Dan. Where do you see Newton schools going in the future under new superintendent? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, uh, good question. Uh, I, I'd like to see the Newton schools continue, uh, continue to grow, continue to be excellent. I think, unfortunately, there's a little bit of, um, I'd say, repairing some of the past neglect that we've had, especially in the physical plant that has to be done. I think the new superintendent is going to be challenged in helping us to work through that process, and the new school committee as well, obviously, will be challenged in helping us as a community work through that process because there will be tough trade-offs. Uh, and I think that's going to impact the city side as well because of the, the magnitude of the physical plant issues, the same problem exists on the city side. And so we'll have to continue to trade that off. And we've, we've sunk an enormous amount of, of our investment, our available investment money into Newton mm -hmm. North. So uh, I want to see the, the schools continue to be excellent. I'd like to see some of the basic fundamental problems addressed. The cost structure imbalance problem has to be addressed. I think there has to be some more uh, open measurement put in place. So if we were able to have a stronger set of goals and measures and objectives, if we were able to solve the uh, the financial challenge that we have and make progress on the physical plant, I think that that superintendent would have had a very successful tenure. I assume you're talking about the permanent superintendent. Yeah. <laughs> that might be a little bit uh, a little bit of a reach for Dr. Marini to tackle in one or two years. Yeah. Jonathan? Well, uh, <clears throat> I think it's very helpful that we do have Dr. Marini here for one year. Um, I, I led the, uh, the search committee to, to bring him back here to Newton to finish out his career. Uh, Jim, I think, is going to do a great job of this transition. Not only is he, um, is he moving things, continuing to move things forward, but he's getting ready to pass off the baton next year. I think our next superintendent really uh, needs to be an outstanding uh, educational leader and manager. Uh, an exceptional communicator who really um, builds trust in our school system 
and somebody who's an innovator, both in, uh, in education and in fiscal management. Um, in terms of where our school system needs to be in the future, I think one thing we need to do is really revamp the educational model. The, the current educational model has been around for 80, 100 years probably. And with today's technology, um, with today's ability to bring in um, outside resources and to have our students work um, and do projects in, in the community um, and to bring in more public uh, engagement in the process, I think we, it, now is the time and with certainly under our new superintendent's leadership, uh, under the new school committee's leadership, um, we can move our system forward and uh, the Newton's, um, Newton Public Schools new strategic plan lays out some of where we need to be going in terms of terms of the future and 21st century skill development. Dan? Uh, I don't know. I think we beat that one okay. to death. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This next goes to, so you don't have any, any No, that's, that's fine. Okay. This next question goes to John. Then if there was a time, we got just a couple minutes okay. to go. Okay. Okay. Real quick. If there was a target cap of 350 students at each elementary school, what would your recommendation be um, and how to approach the long-term facility strategy for elementary schools? Okay. Um, Newton has probably the smallest uh, elementary schools um, in eastern Massachusetts. We average about 366 kids for elementary schools. Um, many other school districts are well over 400. We're running very small schools, which to me is wonderful. And I would like to continue that. Uh, the question is, if we had capped it at 350, how would how we deal with it? How would you go about bringing in those other kids? Yeah. Well, you're going to have to move the kids uh, from the schools that are over 400. We have two schools, um, three schools now that are, you know, in the 450 and above range, which to me is definitely on the little bit too big side theory. They would have to either be redistricted or moved. Um, you know, not an sorry, easy proposition. I gotta, quick, All I right. Wrap up. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, I'll go really fast. The uh, I don't know what that means. The, uh, <laughs> I think what we'd have to do is we'd have to look at the layout of the population in the city. We'd have to look at where we need uh, elementary schools. I think having a small school and a neighborhood school also, we want to have local. We don't want to have people driving to school, busing to school at the elementary level. Okay. I, I'm sorry i got to cut you off. Right, we got to wrap up. I want to thank you guys. This has been a really good debate. And I want to thank everyone watching, and I want you to all to search for veracity. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks. Very good. Tom, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Tom. Thank